OK. So first thing I'm going to do is show you guys the rational 0 test. And when doing the rational 0 test, what we want to do is determine p and q. All right. Now p represents your um, constant. Q represents the leading coefficient. Right now, we don't see a Q, but we can say there's a number 1 right there, right? OK. So when we're talking about the rational 0 test, we're not actually talking about the numbers P and Q. We're actually talking about the factors of P and Q. So let's do P first, which is 36, right? So we have 36 times 1. We have 18 times 2. We have 12 times 3. We have 9 times 4. And we have 6 times 6. Right? Yes? OK. Now let's go to Q. Well, Q is pretty easy. Just 1 times 1. All right? So when I ask you, hey, determine all the rational zeros by the rational zero test, here's what you do. You take the factors of plus or minus of p over q. So what I like to do, you don't have to write all of this out at once, but if you're going to get it wrong, you probably didn't do the step. Because what you do is you, just, you do it, create the tree like I did, and you say p. All right, 36, 18, 12, 9, 6, 4, 3, 2, 1. Yeah, there's a lot of them, right? Then we, take the co then we take the factors of q, 1. You don't need to repeat that. All right. So if you have 36 divided by 6, you have 36 over 6 and you have 6 over 1, the answer is both 6. You don't need to write it twice. You can only write it once. You only need to write it once. Um, so there, that's my possible factors. But let's write them out. So what I write is equals plus or minus. You can write plus or minus for each one, but you can see that's going to be very redundant. So a lot of times I'll just write plus or minus outside the parentheses. So I would apply distributive property to every one of them. And then I just write them out. 36. 18, 12, 9, 6, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now, in this case, you guys actually don't have them over other numbers. Um, I have that. I'll, I have other examples on there you guys have to watch. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, these are all the possible rational zeros. If your polynomial has a 0 that is rational, it is going to be one of those numbers. So therefore, let me take a case. If I said, hey, if 0 equals 5, well, if you do synthetic division with 0 equals 5, are you going to have a remainder? Yeah, of course you are, because it's 5 is not one of my rational zeros. Right? OK. Now, what about if I said it was 5i? Yeah, rational zeros. We haven't talked about that. But no, it's not a one of these. It's not rational, um, real rational. So that is all you guys need to do for your rational 0 test, OK? Um,